All right, good morning. Bobby Lee here from Hurricane Creek Farms. Going to do our Stocker Steer 2021 kind of wrap up video. This is one I, I know a lot of people were really interested in and was popular last year and have asked about it for this year. So we're gonna kind of go through the numbers and whatnot. Um, more talk, less action than typically in our videos. But we do remind you to uh, give the video a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already. But we'll go ahead and, and dive into our numbers. And real briefly, just to describe what stocker cattle are, um, if you're not familiar, not familiar with that terminology. So basically the middle man between cow-calf producer and feedlot or the cattle feeder. Whereas you'll see in a minute with our numbers, we're buying these calves about 600 pounds, grazing them all summer, selling them in November for, you know, hopefully in the mid eights. Um, but just kind of briefly what stocker cattle are. Of course, I am going to give the disclaimer that I don't consider myself an expert. This is one truckload of cattle. That's all this example is. We've done this on this, this, this same scale for the last two years. Um, I guess compared to the general public, I may be an expert, but I learn something new every day, certainly every year. And so it's just a small sample size, but how this can potentially work out. Um, we are in West Tennessee, I guess I should point out too. Um, we can stock fairly dense rates, but just some differences between maybe here and other parts of the country. But to get into the numbers. So you'll see I had 63 head, purchased them right at 600 pounds. I think 601 was what they averaged. Just under $1.40 a pound, between $1.39 and $1.40. Purchase price of 838 a head. That's what we had in them when they stepped off the trailer at our place, you know, including hauling everything. So the cost that we then incurred with them, veterinary care. Um, I am a veterinarian. Those of you that watched you know previous videos probably know that. But that was our cost in our vaccine, our antibiotic. We gave them all a metaphylaxis dose of antibiotic, kind of a preventive measure, knowing that they're high risk for respiratory disease, shipping fever, dewormer, implanting. Um, some of them were bulls, like about a third were bulls, so money that we spent just on a band, which is pretty cheap. Um, put an ID tag in their ear. We did BVD test them. We don't really have much cost in that because the state lab does run that test free of charge. But, Brother, it may have been closer to $40 for the purposes of this discussion. I went ahead and said $50. You're going to be able to get most of those products just like I did for about the same price I did. There's not a lot of markup that retailers have there. Um, so anybody who's even not a veterinarian, you should be able to do it for $50 a head, even using the same products we did. Feed cost, $70 a head. We don't feed these animals a lot. The vast majority of the time we have them, they're getting less than a pound per head per day. Just enough feed to keep them coming to a feed bunk. Easy to handle, you know, gentle, that kind of thing. We do bump that feed up, you know, as we get closer to the end, grass is getting a little shorter, especially after we get a frost, that kind of thing. Mineral, $30 a head. We probably spent more there than we had to. We fed um, Vitafirm heat mineral for most of the summer. That's the most expensive mineral I've ever fed, but I tell you, I think it was worth the money. We're going to feed it again next year. But feeding mineral, and you could have put those together and just said $100 a head. Um, our hedge, and I'm not a marketing, you know, money guy expert when it comes to all the different ways you can, you know, build in some risk protection there. But essentially, we bought a put, is the way I understand it, and came out to about $20 a head. So our total cost, you could say, what, $170 additional to our purchase price. We were in them for a little over $1,000 a head by the time we sold them. We sold, bought 63, we sold 61. We, we had a death loss of two. Um, two out of 63, I think it comes out to right at 3%. Acceptable, we'd love for it to be a 0%. Um, but sold them for $1,298 a head. Uh, 833 pounds at just under $1.60. Um, if you do that math, of course, it comes out to a little more than that. 
that's after you figure in this number here is figuring in you know deductions for what we spent hauling them shipping them to to the auction uh, commission you know the insurance th those little, little fees that are kind of almost hidden costs they're some kind of sometimes so twelve hundred ninety eight dollars a head you know I only had a little over thousand dollars in them looks like made nearly three hundred dollars head well if, if you go ahead and divide it by the 63 that we bought it comes out to $1,256 a head we would have made on 63 head. Um, but a purchase, or a, or a purchase, a profit, $248 a head. Um, that's where the smiley face comes in. We were very happy with that. We figured $100 a head is kind of the minimum we want to make it worth our time and the risk involved. And so, I think last year, I had to go back and look at our video, I think we were right around $150 a head. So did much better than that. If you wanted to figure in pasture rent costs, because we didn't, you know, this was ground we own. Obviously we don't own it for free though. I think going rate for pasture rent um, here in Tipton County in West Tennessee, um, according to UT extension figures, a little over $30 a head or $30 an acre we're running about one head per acre, so you could subtract another 30, maybe even $40 a head if you wanted to there, but still profiting well over $200 a head. So again, very, very happy with this. Where did, you know, we really think we did well, what allowed us to do that this year? Um, one, we had, had minimal death loss, acceptable level there. We, you, you know, you're kind of making money two ways. One, just on the weight they gain, you know, going from 601 to 833. But also putting them in these groups, being able to sell them by a full truckload or a pot load. You know, we're buying them, not all just individually, but you're buying them through a weekly auction where there may be, you know, seven, eight here off one farm, you know, two off this farm. But you're, you're paying, you know, we pay 20 cents a pound less to buy them at 230 pounds lighter. And so I don't know that we'll always be able to do that well every year. The market has been strong the last several weeks that helped there. And so certainly you make money not only just on the weight they gain, but by putting them in those bigger groups where they're more attractive to um, these feedlots or um, these buyers who are procuring them for a feedlot. Another key, and this may seem like common sense, because it should be, is buying good cattle, starting out with good cattle. Um, we didn't do perfect here. The, we, we bought the majority of these, like it was 42. You know, I just called up an order buyer, bought them actually at the same auction where we then sold them back. But it's an auction that's 150 miles from us, not, not that close. Of course, we wanted, we wanted about 60, 65 head, just like we ended up with. And so I personally went and bought at two auctions a little closer to home. I think I bought nine one week, uh, 11 one week, or 10 one week, 11 another week. I, I, I didn't buy as good a cattle as the order buyer buys. Probably partly, and maybe mostly, because they're just better at it than I am. They, they buy cattle multiple times a week, year round. They know what they're looking for. They can identify that calf that maybe just ain't quite what you want. Um, much better than I can. Two, I think the quality of cattle going through that particular auction is generally higher than through some of our more local auctions, unfortunately. But the, just to give you a, kind of an example of that, again, 61 head averaged 833. Of those 61 head, we had 44 that averaged 876. And that means we had 17 that only averaged 725. Huge, I mean, that's 150 pounds difference. That, if you could somehow, and I don't know that you'll ever be able to totally identify those calves that are gonna do, you know, gain, you know, that much more, but you can really, you know, you can get that number on up even more. Um, when you think about, okay, well, how, how much weight do they gain per day? About a pound per day is all. Now, again, you, you identify those calves and you eliminate those that didn't do as well, the, those 17 head that only weighed 725, 
oh, you're getting closer to a pound and a quarter and, and doing even better. We don't consider that too bad. Between about 1.15 or so is typical of what we've done, I think, over the last three years. These calves are just on grass. We've got a good grass-clover mix, but you know, minimal feed supplementation there. And so that, that is, is really one of the keys. If you can buy cattle next year, I've already decided um, if any way possible, we're going to try to buy everything we can using the order buyer. Uh, and we wanted to do more of that this year. Just when we called, 42 was just all they, they could get bought for us that one day and, and shipped at one time. Um, and two, I enjoy going to an auction. Everybody loves the little bit of an adrenaline rush or thrill sitting there bidding on anything, but I, I've learned a lesson that if I want to be profitable, I can find somebody else better suited to buy than I am. I guess another thing to think about, you know, 63 head, are we buying bulls or are we buying steers? We're mostly buying steers. Typically we say we don't care, we just soon buy bulls because traditionally they'll be about 10 cents a pound cheaper. I didn't keep track with my group as close as my brother did, but his that didn't do quite as well were the ones he had purchased as bulls. Now, naturally, when you get them, and we're buying them this size, we banned them again. And so they, for several days, you know, after that, they're probably losing weight. I mean, they're, they're not eating much. They're definitely not gaining any weight. And he thought some of his that were bulls just never really ever caught quite back up with the steers, which makes sense. So in the future, you know, it, it's kind of a, a balancing act. Is it worth buying them a little cheaper, spending less on them as bulls, or would you rather just buy them as steers and have them outperform, you know, and it, just be those, uh, those better performing animals? Um, based on kind of the thoughts over the last few days since we've sold these, we probably just prefer to buy as many steers as possible in the future. Not, not scared of bulls necessarily. And for those of you who are regular viewers of the channel, you may wonder well, why 63, all summer you talked about 70, 73, you know, uh, you know, what, what's, where's the number difference come in there? We had 63 head that we bought. We had 10 head that were our homegrown ones, you know, our Brahma cross, if you do watch our videos regularly, you know, we had 63 black ones and then we had those others that were just odd, looked different, different color, a lot of that Brahma influence in them. And so, those didn't sell with the group. Um, we kept those. Essentially, we're feeding those out. Had one that may keep for her bull. But anyway, just a little explanation there as to why you may get, be getting different numbers than, than what we have given you in the past. Another thing that really helped us this year, again, the market did really well. Um, we didn't end up needing the hedge because the market stayed strong. Um, kind of a difference this year versus last year. Last year I was looking back, I think we only paid $7.26 a head at basically the same price. Bought them just a little lighter last year, but paid over $100 a head, about $110 a head less. But last year we were buying, I mean that was March of 2020, peak COVID hysteria, especially as far as the impacts it was having on all the financial markets, including cattle. So we were in a little more money this year, but the market really did a lot better for us this year. We, we were really happy with the price we got. Uh, of those two, you know, they split ours up because we had a 44 head that averaged 876. I believe that load sold for $1.56 and a half. The 725s sold for $1.70. I, and I was a little bit blown away. I didn't think we would see. You hear those numbers and those prices for cattle west of here. Um, that are pretty much already in feed country, feed yard country, bringing that money. Uh, so I was I was impressed that we got that price here in Tennessee, because uh, of course they've got but the buyers had you know money tied up in shipping those cattle there. So very happy with that. Um, you know we'll continue to sell them just that same way, especially as long as they continue to perform as well or better you know than we expect like that. If I had any advice, as again, not really considering myself an expert, but if I had any advice for somebody maybe getting started, again, buying the good cattle on the front end, don't try to, to pinch pennies too much. Go ahead and spend money on, you know, using a good quality mineral. You know, using good quality, you know, on your vet, you know, using a good day warmer, a 
good antibody. Don't not. And again, you you can, you can obviously working with a vet would be a good idea. You get a good you know veterinary patient relationship, and you know you can you can really cost yourself by trying to save money in places where you shouldn't. Um, it's hard, and back to more on the cattle thing, you, you can definitely overpay for cattle, obviously. You can overpay for anything. But when it comes to, to buying cheap cattle, if, if they're not good quality, you can't buy them cheap enough. Like if they're just not gonna grow or you're gonna deal with sickness, um, and even if it's sickness that doesn't result in death, but they just don't grow like they should, I mean, I don't know, at least in my opinion, it is hard, hard, hard to make money on those types. So I, I'd rather go ahead and spend the money on the better animals on the front end, have them perform better. And for anybody who just might be starting out, you know, putting together a full truckload, you know, buying that many animals, having that many, maybe for your first go at it is maybe a little more risky, a little more than you want to bite off. Um, the first few years we did this, we weren't selling by the truckload. And it, just depending on a variety of factors, it's, it is a lot harder to make money when you're selling them. You know, in, in smaller groups, you just don't get as much of a premium. Uh, you, know, you may even be happy breaking even, you know, the first year or two before you, you feel like really diving off and having a, a bigger group like this. But, you know, working with somebody you know, um, you know, or, or, or talking to somebody, that, that, and that's how we, we did it. We, um, you know, knew some people who were already doing this, had, had talked with it, kind of piggybacked off of what they were doing. And over the last few years, we've kind of, you know, experiment a little bit here and there. You know, everybody's operation's a little different. You know, found little ways that we've, you know, made ours a little different. Things that maybe just work out a little better for us, just in the way our pastures or forages are set up. Uh, you know, the way we manage them on a daily basis. Um, but I mean, we put eyes on these calves every day. We, I know some people who don't. I, it, it's. I enjoy it for one, but just, you know, being sure you're right there if there is a problem. Because like they say, if you notice one looks sick and you think you might need to treat him today, well then you probably should have treated him yesterday. He's, uh, that they're, you know, being a, a prey animal, they are experts at hiding signs of illness, weakness, and so by the time it's apparent, um, you know, sometimes it may be too late. So. You know, being out there, being amongst them, you know, identifying an animal that doesn't look quite right or is isolating from the rest of the herd. But appreciate everybody watching. Um, fire away with any questions. Um, leave a comment below. Um, if you're on Instagram, we're, we're on there as well. We, we, we respond to people pretty well there, but yeah, just leave a comment below. You know, thank you for watching. We, uh, we enjoy doing this. We'll, we'll keep doing it. Um, we'll have some more videos coming here soon. We'll, we'll kind of focus on those steers, I point. They're just down here in, on our little feed yard. Kind of show you what we're doing with them, our little small number feeding out to finish. But y'all have a good day. Eat beef and God bless.